Hey guys, Mike here at the ED Toy Board, and I'm pretty excited to bring you both colors of the Moto 360, the most anticipated smartwatch this year. So we have the black version and the gray version. The gray version has a gray Horween leather watch band with a stainless steel watch face. The black version has a black Horween leather watch band with a black painted stainless steel face. This looks a little more stealthy, and I think this one looks a little more jewelry-like. Both retail for $249, so about $250. Now, both of these are running Android Wear, so any Android phone running 4.3 or newer and supports Bluetooth LE will work with these watches. Now, both of these have circular displays with a 1.56-inch diameter display with a resolution of 320 by 290. They're using IPS LCD technology instead of OLED, like uh, Samsung's watch does. So these work a little bit better outdoors, but they're not quite as vibrant. They don't quite have the same off-axis viewing of an OLED display. Now, in terms of specs, they have a TI OMAP 3 processor, of course, pretty low end, four gigs of internal storage and a half a gig of RAM with a 320 milliamp hour battery. Now, battery life is estimated to be about one day depending on use. So plan to charge this overnight. Now, both of these come with gyroscopes, accelerometers, a compass, a pedometer, and a heart rate sensor. We also have dual microphones, which are waterproof because this is IP67 certified, so it can be submerged in water for a limited period of time. So, of course, with a circular watch, we have to have circular packaging, which is quite nice here. So, I'm just going to cut the plastic along the side. So, we just have these three tabs to cut along the side. All right, so just lift the lid here. Shouldn't it come right out? There we go. So, if you look inside, you'll see Moto 360. A little padding here for the watch face, which is right there. And inside we'll find our Moto 360 in this little cradle here, looking really sleek. So as you can see here, we have this little pad to uh, keep the watch band in shape. Just push that out, it's a little foam pad. And there is the watch band. You can really smell the fresh leather in here. So this is Horween leather by an American manufacturer. It looks really sharp. You can see that the inside is a more of a velvet sort of texture. The outside is a, a shinier leather texture. We have our watch face, which is covered in plastic. Let's go and peel that off. Really sharp looking. We also have a piece of plastic covering the back panel, so let's go and peel that off. So behind this cradle, we'll find all the accessories. So the first thing I see here is the wireless charging dock. So let's go and pop this out of here. So toward the back, you'll find your micro USB charging port. At the bottom, you'll find this rubber foot with the Motorola branding. This grips onto a table, prevents it from sliding off. It's also pretty nicely weighted here, so it shouldn't come off too easily. And then we have the charging surface, as you can see here, which is where the watch rests in. Now, the entire device or the entire dock is actually covered in sort of a matte textured material, which actually feels quite nice and should do a nice job protecting the watch from scratching. We also have the micro USB charging cable for the charging dock. And this also is Motorola branding complete with the Motorola dimple familiar from the Motorola phones. And we have some light paperwork here so we have a quick start guide just telling us to charge it first and how to turn it on and then some regulatory information. All right so let's go ahead and open up the gray version. So as you can see here again much more jewelry like with that raw stainless steel finish again very attractive along with that gray watch band which I think a lot of people don't prefer. I think a lot of people prefer the black watch band. Let's go ahead and push that through. So there we go, we just have our little screen protector here to protect that Corning Gorilla Glass 3 front glass. Then we have the same protector on the back protecting the heart rate monitor. Now inside we'll find the exact same accessories including the charging dock and the power adapter, all the same color. Of course we also have our paperwork. So taking a look at the watch faces, again, you have the stainless steel version with that milled metal finish, which I think looks pretty nice. The black version, again, a little more stealthy here. Can't quite see as much of that metal finish because it is painted black, but again, it is stainless steel and you can kind of see the finish or the grain of the milled metal there. I think a lot of people will actually prefer the leather watch band on the black version versus this more velvet-like watch band on the gray version. It's actually similar to the texture behind the black watch band. As you can see, the gray and uh, black look the same when you flip them over. We also have stainless steel watch buckles, and as you can see, when you flip them around, they actually tell you that's stainless steel here. So again, I think it looks a little more jewelry-like on the stainless steel, raw stainless steel version versus the black. Now, the watch bands are removable, but the pins are a little difficult to get at. Now, along the left side, you'll find the microphone assembly, which is water-resistant. Now, along the right-hand edge, filling the position of a traditional watch crown, you'll find a home button, which is surrounded in a brass-like material here. So again, it looks a little more premium. 
Now, if you look at the back, you'll see the heart rate monitor toward the center, which uses an LED light. Now, making some headlines is the fact that the Moto 360 really doesn't have a full 360 degree display. There's a little notch down here, which houses the ambient light sensor, the display drivers, and the digitizer. So that's necessary in order to create this really thin bezel and edge to edge display because that has to go somewhere. I think it's really impressive because it creates a very large display without creating a large watch face. It looks really impressive. And when I mean edge to edge, it really is edge to edge. In fact, the display seems, seems to extend behind the watch face. It's really interesting, especially with the bezeled or the beveled glass edge, which looks really sharp here. Again, much more like jewelry than most smartwatches today. And again, a really sharp display. All right, so let's go and power this on for the first time. Just gonna tap and hold the power button along the side. Boots up and you get that little Motorola logo. All right, first thing we need to do is select our language and we have to install the Android Wear app on our Android phone. So I've already installed the Android Wear app. So what I have to do now is pair with a new wearable. So right now it's scanning for available devices. Right now I have three available, but the one I want is displayed right here. In fact, if you go to your Android Wear device here, you actually see the identifier. So you can see Moto 360 B583. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that one. So right now it's connecting to the watch using Bluetooth. So you of course need to make sure that Bluetooth is turned on. We're gonna click pair. So they're paired and ready to go. And the first thing it will need to do is install any updates. Now let's go and take a look at the user interface. So as you can see here, I can tap the display to wake it up. So it, basically the home screen of an Android Wear watch is the time or watch face you've chosen and your most recent notification. So I can swipe up to see all my notifications here. I can continue swiping through them so I can see my text messages. I can see my Instagram messages. Basically all of these are notifications pushed to your phone. I can also see all my Google Now cards. I can see my sports cores, stocks, and my pedometer, as well as my weather conditions. And usually these appear at the end of your push notification list here. So for example, I can see a preview of this notification. I can tap on it to expand it so I can see the text of it. Now if I swipe to the right here, I can see this specific message thread. So I can see all the messages here. And I can swipe to the right again to act on it. So I can reply via SMS or I can have it open on my phone. So if I go to reply to SMS, this is a test of voice dictation. So now I could send it or cancel it. Now I can also just dismiss this by swiping to the right. I can also just wake up the watch by twisting my wrist or I can hit the power button along the side to either wake it up or put it to sleep. Now you can also mute the display of the watch just by putting your hand over the watch face. Now you can also swipe down to see your battery status as well as your date and you can mute your notification. So as you can see here, you get a little mute icon here. If you want to unmute it, just swipe down again. And again, this also has a vibration motor in here. So you receive notifications through the vibration motor, not a speaker, but of course your phone will also sound if you have that turned on. So you can hear both your phone and feel the vibration on your smartwatch. Now, when you're on the home screen, you can also say, okay, Google, what's the weather like today? Now you can also swipe up here to get to the other actions that are available under Google Now. And if you swipe all the way down here, you'll see you have your settings panel and you have your app launcher. So if I tap on settings here, you can see what's available. I can adjust my brightness. Now by default, it's set to auto right here, which is smart because it uses the ambient light sensor to automatically dim or brighten the display depending on conditions. But personally, I prefer a little more control here. So I've been running this on four. You also have ambient screen. So basically ambient screen on allows you to see the device's watch face and most recent notification in a dimmed state. So if you have that on, that will drain the battery more quickly. But if you have it off, the watch face completely goes dark and goes into standby mode until you twist your wrist to wake it up. Personally, I prefer to have a watch face on at all times so I can quickly turn my wrist to see the time. Now we also have airplane mode, which you can toggle on and off. You can power it off, restart it, reset the device, you can also change the watch face or go to about this device. Now the watch face is also pretty easy to change here. So all you have to do, wake up the device, tap and hold on the watch face, and you can cycle through all the available watch faces here. So you can see there are a lot of watch faces. Some of them are preloaded using apps on Android, but you can see the ones that Motorola have included are circular in design and they have a nice design here. Now, personally, I prefer the rotate watch face here just because it keeps the time toward the top and allows room for the notifications here. Now, if I tap and hold the power button along the side, this will take me to my settings panel here. 
So that's one way of quickly accessing your settings for controlling your screen brightness. Now what Android Wear doesn't yet feature natively is an app launcher. So in order to access an app launcher, just get to the Google Now screen and swipe up and we can go to Start. So if we go to the Start panel, these are apps. Some of them come preloaded with the watch, including the Heart Monitor as well as apps I've downloaded from the Android Google Play Store. Now this app is designed specifically for the Android Wear watch. All I have to do is download Android apps that support Android Wear. So you can see here I have my light controls for controlling my hue lights. I can turn them off or turn them on. I can also, if I continue swiping to the right, you can see I can change my color, I can change the brightness, I can see, see the uh, saturation, that sort of thing. So I have lots of controls here just by swiping left and right. Now when somebody is calling you on your connected Android phone, you'll receive a notification on your watch which allows you to either dismiss it or answer the call. But of course you'll have to pick up your phone to actually talk to the person. Now the Wear app allows you to control things such as the ambient screen. So you can toggle that on and off if you prefer. You can also select whether you want to see cards on a dim screen or not. And I say always show because it allows me to see my most recent notification. You can also silence the connected phone if you prefer so only the watch pushes the notifications. You can also show calendar events and you can resync all the apps from your phone to your watch if somehow they fall out of sync. You can also prevent some apps from pushing notifications to your watch. So for example, if you don't want Instagram to push notifications, you can select that or of course you can remove it. Now Motorola also offers a free app for controlling your Moto 360. So for example, you can see your watch faces, you can see your wellness profile, as well as your geolocation for the watch. So you can see the ones that are available and you can select the one you want directly from this app instead of selecting it on the watch itself. Now I also have some customization options here. So for example, my preferred watch face can be either white or black, or I can select some of the color choices here. So you can see blue is by default, but I can also select red, click update, click OK, and it will push the update to my watch. So although some text tends to be cut off at the edges, especially when you're scrolling up or down, but Android Wear is pretty well adapted to a circular or square display. Now in terms of performance, the Moto 360 does tend to be a little laggy compared to the Gear Live and the LG G Watch, which are running Snapdragon 400 processors. So those seem to be better processors than the TIO map in this watch, but thanks to the simplicity of the user interface here, I don't think it's a big concern. Now in terms of battery life, the Moto 360 is actually very consistent with the LG G Watch. It's not as good as the Gear Live, but I'm able to easily get a full day out of of this watch without it running out on me. In fact, in the past week of testing, using the watch heavily on my wrist from day to day, I have not run the battery down until I've gone to bed. This is also the first smartwatch to sport inductive charging. So instead of having to connect a dock or a clip to charger device, all I have to do is rest it on a wireless Qi charger, either the one they've included, or you can use any third party charger, like for example, the Nexus charger I have right here, works the same either way. Now, although the Moto 360 looks like a heavy metal watch, it's actually very lightweight, 49 grams versus 59 grams for the Gear Live and 63 grams for the LG G watch. So it's one of the lightest smartwatches out there right now. Now, I've run into a few occasions where the Moto 360 has been powered down accidentally. And I think that's partly due to the fact that the power button sticks out along the side. And with a circular watch face, it's pretty easy to accidentally press and hold that button in a number of situations. So for example, if you're bending your hand or if you're leaning on your hand, the watch can dig into your hand and press that button to power it off. Or if you stick your hand in your pocket and the edge of your pocket kind of connects with that, and pressing and holding it powers it. So there have been three occasions in the past week where I've gone to my watch and found that it's accidentally powered down. So the Molo 360 at $250 gives you a standout design, excellent materials, and a great user interface. I'm a big fan of smart watches because it puts the notifications on your wrist instead of having to constantly take out your smartphone to check what that notification was. So I'm a huge fan of smart watches and without a doubt, this is the best one right now. So it comes highly recommended. So that's gonna do for me in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.